you'll probably be wondering what that funny sound was. That is um, The Chanting Millions, which was uh, the name of a film, a documentary film, that I made for the assignment series, the BBC, in 1995. And um, it's about a Japanese religious cult called the Sakagakai, for whom chanting is a very important part of their daily life. Now, the Sakagakai were very powerful. As I say, they had um, more than 10 million members in those days, and also considered to be, by some people, somewhat dangerous, though by others they were very much revered. I found making this film absolutely fascinating because um, I first went to Japan when I was about 19 years old. I was on leave from Korea where I was doing my military service and um, I had some, had some leave in Japan and found it a completely fascinating place and it had interested me ever since then. And when I went back to make this film, I saw another, a completely different aspect of Japanese life. Um, the leader of the Sokogakai was a gentleman called Mr. Ikeda, who I understand is still alive today, uh, though not nearly as powerful, I imagine, as he was in the days when I made this film. Uh, he then was very much feared, and um, it was thought that he would probably have a great deal of influence on Japanese political life. I, you will see why in a few minutes' time. But um, So I hope you enjoy The Chanting Millions. Here they are. In the year we commemorate the Allied victory over Japan and the terrible atrocities it revealed, we're again reminded that this is a land of puzzling contradictions, as well as ornate temples and pastoral calm and mysticism and pacifism, there are sudden eruptions of extreme violence. When this year poison gas was released into the Tokyo subway, the shocking suspicion emerged that it was done by a religious cult that claims its roots in Buddhism. It was in the foothills of Japan's sacred Mount Fuji that the Om Shinrikyo sect that stands accused of the gas attack trained its followers. It was in Buddhist teachings and in the Book of Revelation, grossly perverted and corrupted, that justification was somehow found for mass murder. That is the charge that faces the charismatic leader of Om, Shoko Asahara, when he shortly goes on trial. The Om case raises many concerns that have come up before in relation to other cults around the world. But it also poses questions that are peculiar to Japan. Above all, the Om case calls into question the role and the status and the influence of the vast number of other religious groups. Believe it or not, in Japan today, there are roughly 231,000 officially registered religious organizations. Most of them are very small, but some are big and powerful. By far the biggest, with 10 million followers, is Sokogakai. Sokogakai is much more than a religious organization. It's a widespread social and political movement highly disciplined, and some say dangerous. Head of Soka Gakkai since 1960 is Daisako Ikeda. For his supporters, Ikeda is the great cultural and spiritual leader. Another view says he's a bully with a lust for power. <laughs> おじさんに対してみんなあの、え、
common men, however serious, do not find themselves, as Mr. Ikeda frequently does, in the company of an international elite that includes the likes of Mrs. Thatcher. He's frequently photographed with royalty, prime ministers and presidents. When President Mandela came recently to Japan on a state visit, his only private audience was with Mr. Ikeda. Why is a man who has never held public office found in such company? He has access to great wealth, but is that enough? Since powerful people seek the company of other powerful people, what does that tell us about Mr. Ikeda? あの、現在のですね、え、日本におきまして、え、ただ一人の人間の持つ力量ではですね、え、池田大作は最高の実力者だと思います。This is the foundation of Mr. Ikeda's power. Sokogakai is the lay organization founded to support Naishirin Shoshu Buddhism, a 700-year-old sect. These followers of a 13th century Japanese monk are considered heretical by mainstream Buddhists. Central to their belief is the power of chanting that by the invocational recitation of the words nam myoho renge kyo almost anything can be achieved Sokogakai took these ancient and simple beliefs and marketed them with astounding success. It may look spiritual, but Sokogakai is all about practical things, and that includes personal wealth and political power. It's in Japan's cities that Sokogakai gained most of its support. In the post-war years, it grew rapidly, and it's thought to have had special appeal for a defeated and disillusioned generation. The faithful are expected to chant daily, to donate generously to soccer funds, and to recruit new members. In the city of Kawasaki, south of Tokyo, soccer has devoted support from the Umizawa family, who own a small chain of beauty parlors. <laughs> Apart from the father of the family, all the others, son, daughter and in-laws, are in the business. First to join Sakagakai was Mrs. Umazawa. Not only did she convert the rest of the family, but between them, they've introduced 112 other families to the practice of daily chanting. Now retired, Mr. Umezawa sometimes chants for five hours a day. He and his family have no doubt that the growth of their business and other good fortune is entirely due to regular practice of this ritual. They faithfully pay their dues to Sokogakai, and according to Mrs. Umezawa, their loyalty and their chanting is rewarded. <laughs> で、お金がなかったんです。あの、働けど働けど、我が暮らし楽になられてね、あの。うん、これ。それで1年に50万ずつのお金がね、貯まりますようにって書いてあるんです。ですけど3年おきに世界旅行ができる教会になりました。It's not only to make money that the Omazawas practice their daily chanting. で、3番目が 
私がね、入ってお願いしたわけです。<笑>そしたらね、あのお,このお母さんが先生したときに、この男の子が生まれたんですね。No doubt Soko Gakkai has many satisfied members, but some feel betrayed, sensing that their loyalty and their money and their votes have been exploited to serve the political ambitions of Mr. Ikeda. He founded his own political party in 1964, and although it's been partially dissolved, suspicions remain. Some of them expressed at this protest meeting of former Soko Gakkai members. Ikeda Daisatsu-san was shiba shiba 天下を取ろうということを再三にわたって口走るようになるそして自分はその最高権略者であるとも言った Although Soko Gakkai has taken steps to sever formal links with its political party it still commands a block vote to use as it wishes 選挙においてですね600万の票を持つことができるそれはですね、えー、十数パーセントの数になります、えー、日頃の投票においてですね、えー、従いまして、えー、池田大作氏はですね、えー、その創価学会の棟梁としましてそのその票を動かす力をですね、えー、有効に行使すればあ多大の影響力を行使することができる。Of 700 disgruntled former members here, many complain about how Soko Gakkai extracted money from them. Of course, Soko Gakkai justifies all its money raising activities. Soka Gakkai has gloriously embarked on its voyage toward the 70th anniversary of its founding. The Soka family throughout the world will continue to advance cheerfully and harmoniously in its course in different activities day and night, widening the current of Buddhism among the people throughout the universe. Heralding the era of peace and freedom. Yes, Soka Gakkai is now international. In the UK, this is its lavish headquarters, used by some 8,000 members. But in the United States, and notably in California, Soka Gakkai has greater success, claiming 150,000 adherents. But it's also been much criticized and even classified as a dangerous cult. I think by anybody's definition of cult,、uh, if someone's life is completely、uh, controlled by、uh, an individual or an organization, that would certainly、uh, fit in the category of cult. When I was in the SGI, I would have died for Ikeda. And I know hundreds of people who,、uh, who felt the same way. I reject categorically the idea that we are a dangerous cult. Because to me, that implies,、uh, would imply a pseudo religion that exists mainly to take advantage of people, whether financially or psychologically. And I know in my 22 years in this organization, we have never done that. In America, too, there are certainly satisfied customers. Among the affluent who have seaside homes at Malibu are those who believe that chanting has brought them health, wealth, and happiness. And who spread the word among their friends and neighbors. I'd like to、uh, welcome everyone. We're going to、uh, chant,、uh, we call morning and evening. Neil Stevens is an investment banker. He and his wife Lynn hold weekly meetings where they introduce newcomers to the practice of chanting.
For some newcomers, chanting in a foreign tongue seems odd. But believers are keen to extol the rewards and the enlightenment it brings. I think I thank every day the girl who introduced this practice to me because it changed my life. I have such a beautiful husband, a beautiful daughter. When I had lost three little babies, and I had such, oh, I don't know, I had so much fortune, but yet that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be happy. And I was able to... Um, find, tap into the joy in my life and change such poison into medicine and make all my dreams come true and I really have. So then Katie got me going on this doing the Namiho Renge Kyo thing and uh, it really empowered me to create uh, pretty much my business dream, the beginning of it anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, really helped us push it through uh, when we had you know tremendous obstacles. The actual practice of this Buddhism is very accessible to everybody because there's a very simple formula and a daily practice, plus the idea that you tap so directly into your Buddha nature and your life condition that you can actually see results in your daily life. It turned my life into a living hell, basically. I was miserable. Why principally? Um, mostly because of my husband. They um, manipulated my husband into becoming a totally different person. He was not the person that I fell in love with and married and wanted to spend the rest of my life with. He uh, became totally obsessed, was never home. They had him going 24 hours a day, and uh, he was hell to live with. If we put pressure on each other, it was only so that we could uh, move forward and advance as a religious organization in this country. It was not, the primary idea was never to take people's money. As I was walking out the building, uh, one of the women's division leaders said, did you make a contribution today? And I said, no, I don't have any money to make a contribution. I have $5 in my purse. You should give that $5. I can't give that $5. It's, it's Tuesday. I don't get paid until Friday. I have to buy milk. She said, if you give the five dollars today, it'll come back to you in a much, in a much bigger way. So I said, so you're telling me I shouldn't buy milk for my 18-month-old daughter and I should give the five dollars to you? Said, yeah. And I said, no. Uh, some of our members and leaders, although sincere, were overzealous. And uh, basically about five years ago, we just put an end to uh, most specific targets and uh, just decided that the best way to go was just to help people practice Buddhism and as their, their own personal uh, circumstances improve in society, uh, as they feel appreciation for this Buddhism, then they will donate. We're, we're, we're their little worker bees. We're, we're collecting all their little money, all their little honey for them, and we gladly give it over, you know. I just, I, my feeling was that they, they just think we're, we're stupid. And if we're promised that we can get anything we want, if we can get instant gratification, which is sort of the American way, we're going to go for it. So that's how they, how they pass it off. You want a car? Chant. You want a better job? Chant. You want more money? Chant. It occurs to me that one of the, one of the attractions, perhaps, of your particular type of Buddhism is that it does promise practical benefits. That's correct. I think that's very attractive to uh, many people maybe more so Americans, we're sort of an instant uh, microwave kind of culture. And I'm sure that appeals to many, I know it appeals to many people. Is it, is it somewhat dangerous though, that if you, if you expect it to work miracles in your life, if you expect the, the Porsche tomorrow, um, that, that you are going to be disappointed and that you may think that religion has failed you? Yes, uh, that's, that's true. Uh, it is a problem if we don't take the time to help people really study uh, the profundity of Buddhism and to understand it's not about Porsches and cars and, and things like that. These are nice incidentals that might come your way as the result of a higher life condition and your uh, you know, increased ability to uh, work and perform your daily life. But we, we have to teach that after all the idea is to become an enlightened human being with or without a nice car. People are approached from the standpoint of doing something for their personal lives. 
And little by little, they are told that the only way they can advance their personal lives is to advance the organization. Once you've made that connection, that advancing the organization is advancing your personal life, then, you know, they have total control over you. Um, so watching the people uh, who have been abused over time and just fleeced, you know, year in and year out for money, um, that that certainly is you know a horrible form of abuse but and, you were uh, one of the abusers yes I, I certainly was um, at the time I didn't realize that it was abuse I was I was part of that operation um, and we thought that no matter what people did for the organization it, it would be good for them if that's the way it is in the United States how much greater is the money-making machine in Japan Sokogakai means value-creating society, and essentially it peddles another of those familiar Samuel Smiles recipes for self-improvement. While other philosophies suggest the ultimate values are truth and goodness, Sokogakai contends that happiness lies also in profit, and it's something the organization itself is very good at. <laughs> In the wake of the Kobe earthquake, Sokogakai used its money-raising skills to great effect. Special appeals were launched, and the Sokogakai membership responded with extra donations, on top of those they routinely make. More than a dozen fundraising drives have supported UN relief activities for refugees, and numerous exhibitions have been mounted to promote Mr. Ikeda's good works. This is the Tokyo Soccer Elementary School, part of an integrated system of private schools ranging from kindergarten to university, founded by Daisaku Ikeda. Today, the children celebrate the Tanabata Festival. These are the wish trees decked out with wish paper streamers, each one carrying a child's wishes and dreams. Almost all of the children are from Sokogakai families. Like the elementary school, the Soka High School is four times oversubscribed. No religion is taught here, but the children are certainly well versed in the achievements and importance of their school's founder, Mr. Ikeda. He has a um, philosophy based on humanism for the education. Right. He's also a um, poet. A poet? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I, I feel, feel very warm meeting him, and he's like, I feel like he's like my father. If you compare, compare to other schools, I found my friends, friends much brighter. And much brighter brighter yes really and they know why they are studying because they have dream mm. mr Akeda's biggest and most powerful dream machine is another of his own creations seikyo shimbun the sokogakai newspaper is part of a large publishing empire 
and has a daily circulation of five and a half million. It's virtually compulsory reading for soccer members as it carries a regular column by the leader, as well as promoting, in its own words, the movement for peace and culture. The paper is extremely profitable, making more than 60 million pounds a year. It has its own special view of the world and is not averse to tidying up the picture to match the soccer version of reality. From the cradle to the grave, Soccer Gakkai cares for its members. In a country of many religions, it's always been the Buddhists of Japan who've looked after the hereafter. This has worked very much to the financial benefit of Soccer Gakkai. In partnership with the Mitsubishi Bank, a countrywide chain of cemeteries has been constructed, complete with piped Mozart and with thousands of plots, all of them sold. In Japan, it's believed that the spirits of the ancestors care for the living, and so strong emotional bonds are expressed in the way the living remember and treat the dead. This means there's great pressure to purchase a suitable and expensive memorial and to tend it diligently. <laughs> This deep sense of duty to the ancestors appears to be useful to Sokogakai in its dealings with members and employees. Hokkaido あ、毎月いくら、ボーナス月にはいくらという形で給与から差し引かれてその論を支払っていました。結果的には正規の費用の倍近くになったんではないでしょうか。で、あの、三菱はですね、いろんなその大きなビジネスをやってるあの企業体でありま
tended to the spiritual needs of the Soka Gakkai faithful, but not any longer. Following a long-running power struggle between Ikeda and the priesthood, he and the entire Soka Gakkai membership was excommunicated. Since 1992, the temple has been off-limits, and the war of words continues. いろいろ共同した結果、その共同に従わないということで波紋をしたというふうにまあまず申し上げておきたいと思います。仏教史上これほど貢献した団体を人々を残酷に残酷に波紋な波紋される理由も何もない順たちの。お金儲けをこれたまったということだけで、そうなんてことは仏教史上一辺もないこれは不愉快というか、中分子です。奴隷のように戦闘を扱うよ。中世の中世の暗黒時代の宗教と宗教時代と同じだにおきた。And you see yourself like Luther reforming the church and bringing it away from the the corruption of Rome. Yes, is enhanced by Soka University, which he founded in 1971, which is now regarded as one of Japan's more successful seats of learning, and one of the fastest growing. It's already linked to a sister campus in California, and soon to be joined by a second. Thanks to lavish endowment, the pains of recession have scarcely been felt here. A department of bioengineering has recently opened and a new building program will make room for more faculties and departments that feature in the Founder's vision of the future. In the University Prospectus, there's a fulsome account of the Founder's life and works, pointing out that he's tirelessly devoted his life to promoting peace, culture and education by establishing numerous educational and cultural institutions. It also lists his uh, honorary doctorates and professorships from around the world, more than 40 of them, and his national decorations and other major awards and major publications in English. There's also a translation of the uh, founding spirit of the university, penned, of course, by Mr. Ikeda. Be the highest seat of learning for humanistic education. Be the cradle of a new culture. Be the fortress for the peace of mankind. One of Ikeda's major publications in English is titled Choose Life. It's a dialogue with the late Arnold J. Toynbee, the distinguished British historian, and grandfather of Polly Toynbee. It's hard to imagine here, but the name Toynbee in Japan is still extraordinarily influential, not just in the academic world and political world, but the students still read his books. Because he is this prophet of the rise of the Pacific Basin and the power of the Pacific, Ikeda went to uh, uh, London, England to have a series of dialogues with a noted British historian, Arnold Poynbee. And uh, we were part of the entourage, traveling in a capacity as a liaison agent, uh, but also in the ever-presence uh, was our job was to jump on a bomb or in front of the bullet or in front of a knife in case this man was uh, attacked by some fanatical, unhappy person. ドクターは本当に子供のように輝いてくださいました。で、最初のまず対談しましょう。語り合いましょう。語り合いました。で、あのあんまり高度の話だもんで、通訳を三人変えられました。For the soccer faithful, the book is almost wholly writ. Years after Professor Toynbee's death, and to their great surprise. Polly Toynbee and her husband were invited to visit Mr. Ikeda in Japan. Everything that we did was formal 
huge formal gatherings, meetings with different people, meetings with the women of Soccer Gakkai, meetings with different groups, people associated in their minds with my grandfather in some way or another. And we found it very oppressive, very alarming. Uh, and certainly by the time it came to the meeting with him, uh, by then we formed a very clear idea of this extraordinarily military-run organization, phenomenal power, wealth, and um, sinister level of obedience. Did you get any impression of uh, Ikeda, the great spiritual leader? I think it would be hard to imagine a less spiritual man. He was in every way earthy, uh, powerful megalomania. One got this aura of power from him uh, that was extremely alarming. We then went on on another day to him to a huge sort of Nuremberg-style rally in a stadium. Uh, where everything was to the greater worship of him. And again, what he really liked was this feeling of power. Power, and the trappings of power. This palace is the Japanese government's official guest house, where its most important visitors are housed. Recently, the press was summoned here for a photo call. To witness the presentation to President Nelson Mandela of an honorary degree by Daisaku Ikeda. Throughout the ceremony, Mr. Ikeda appeared to be on the most intimate terms with the distinguished visitor. What he did with my grandfather, he has done time and time again with distinguished people all over the world who haven't a clue who he is or what he is and just imagine that he's an important and serious Japanese leader. And so they agree to have a meeting with him. And out of perhaps one meeting comes the impression that it's a very close and important relationship and that this person has given their full support to Ikeda and his movement. <laughs> As founder of Soccer University, Mr. Ikeda has been able to confer honorary degrees on many of Japan's most eminent visitors. When Mr. Gorbachev was so rewarded, it was another splendid photo opportunity, with Ikeda at center stage, friend of the powerful and patron of the arts. Among Ikeda's more grandiose ventures in his cultural crusade is the establishment of two major museums of art. This one houses 5,000 works, including paintings by many of the greatest European masters, from all the principal periods and schools up to the present day. Although there are fine paintings here, experts regard it as a curiously mixed bag, which may be explained in part by the way it was put together. When Mr. Ikeda went shopping in the art galleries of Europe, he didn't waste time on second thoughts or second opinions. Uh, the, the rapidness of which Ikeda would walk through the galleries impressed me. He would uh, spend maybe four to six minutes in each gallery. Uh, he would point and utter these uh, commands, the names of the works, the prices, and the catalog, and everything was written down. Several hours later, uh, one of the general secretaries would come back with a briefcase full of money. If the man was willing to meet for the bulk price before three or six pieces from his gallery, he was given the cash. Uh, I found it amazing to see how fast one man could spend so much money. Very serious questions have been asked on how so much money was spent on certain works of art and where the money went. Here at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, negotiations allegedly took place in 1989 for the purchase of two French Impressionist paintings that are now in the Sokogakai collection. Tax authorities became suspicious because both Sokogakai and Mitsubishi claimed to have purchased the same paintings on the same day, in the same place, but at a different price. Tax investigators could find no trace of two French nationals who supposedly sold the two Renoir paintings to Mitsubishi. There appears to have been a double sale of the paintings in which 11 million dollars went astray, simply disappeared. 
Japanese newspapers suggest that the money probably finished up in a political slush fund, and that Sokogakai is more interested in peddling political influence than it is in French Impressionism. No one was really made the scapegoat. Although the authorities raided the premises of art dealers to discover who did sell the paintings and to whom, and although they confiscated documents, and although Mitsubishi was ticked off for dealing in antiques without a license, and although the inquiries went on for months by official agencies and the press, nothing was resolved. そこが会が大きな政治的な影響力をですね、関係特に行使したのではないか。ロイハイドは現在いませんし、サリンで交差がありませんし、別に悪口も自由の時代で表現の自由の時代で言語の自由だ。はい、彼のやっていいんです。あ
to make religious organizations more accountable. The name of Soka Gakkai, through its support for Shin Shinto, is bound to be linked to the scandal. The Japanese public is well aware that if recent election results are repeated in a general election, Shin Shinto could take the reins of government. And where then would the real power lie?